And I was going to ask if uh, on that list is uh, a report that I heard that uh, foreign accents were overheard in the cockpit of at least one of the planes before takeoff uh, at the gate. Who, who uh, overheard it? Pardon me? Who overheard it? Uh, the tower. Uh, there, there was conversations going on. Uh, um, Aren't those recorded conversations? We ought to be able to get a copy of that. I believe so, and I was going to uh, uh, ask Mike Schultz if that was on the smoking gun list, and huh. uh, if it was, then it was possible that uh, maybe the the uh, the source would be available. But the uh, the the other reason that I called was uh, I'm not sure that too many people are aware of a report that I heard on September 11th this year that there was a mosque in each tower. Um, the, the caller that just called said there was a mosque in the uh, at 9-11. Yeah. I, I don't well, know whether well, he meant each I, tower. I believe, I believe you might have been referring to... I believe to... that there were probably, you know, re- lots of religious... Well, uh, yeah. You know, I, there might have been a Christian one, the, too, or the, something. Uh, the, the mosque, the, the current mosque controversy, I think, is uh, in relation to uh, uh, the cultural center that they want to build. Oh, yeah. Uh, to... to uh, uh, to go with the mosque that is already in the neighborhood, uh, the cultural center would be just a little bit closer to the site of the former towers. Um, well, and the, the 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 that's a red herring in my view. Exactly, because, it's a non-issue because yeah. you, the only the only possible reason it would make any difference to anybody is if you bought into the lie exactly. that Muslims were involved. Exactly, and and so uh, a, a question that everybody should. Have, but it should be not that Muslims were involved, but that it, Islam itself caused this. Exactly, and, exactly. And even if you can show that Muslims were involved, that's like blaming all of Christianity for a bank robber who happens to be. Christian, yeah. you know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. See, they didn't they didn't go after Christianity when Timothy McVeigh was. Uh, uh, yeah, blamed, there you go. Was that was we're, for, uh, we're being attacked by Christianity. Yeah, Tim yeah. McVeigh proved it. Yes, yes, right. And that goes to another whole program, a different show on a different channel for religion <laughs> that I uh, call into frequently and challenge the uh, the notion that uh, that uh, a person's religion uh, uh, defines uh, you know who they are. <laughs> But uh, for, I'll, I'll leave that for another program. But anyway. Um, well, thanks for so, calling in. And I do thank you, Bill. Right on. Thanks. Any more calls? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fire when ready, Gridley. I mean, oh. go ahead, caller. Hey, Bill. Yeah. What's going on? Well, we're dealing with uh, 9-11 as best we can. I want to know what happened to Building 7. What happened to Building 7? Yeah, because there's no earthquake, there's no plane. I mean, it blew up, right? Well, I think what happened was somebody pressed a button on a control panel, and yeah. a computer uh, operated a sequence of explosions that brought it down. Oh, uh, yeah, I've seen the video. I'm pretty I, sure that's what happened. You got a great show there. <laughs> and I'm not too computer smart, so it's like, if I don't watch your show, I don't know what's going on. Well, you know, I, I'm not responsible for a lot of, uh, or any, direct investigation myself. And, uh, you know, I'm nothing more than a, you know, kind of a gathering center for information that I find and think is interesting or relevant. And I try yeah. to keep up on the latest stuff. But yeah. what it, it all boils down to the people that do the work are the ones that are actually, you know, I'm looking at you now. What's yeah. that? I'm looking at you now, and that's where everybody needs to get on the computer, but a lot of people don't have computers. That's true, and, you know, a lot of people don't have any Comcast connection either, which is... They don't even, they don't even got what it takes to watch you. Well, you know, I can't watch me either. I don't have Comcast, but, you know, I've heard that it was, you know, cheap enough that I might be able to if I just right. get the bottom analog channels, and but uh, a lot of... A lot of I was going to say a lot of cable access places are starting to go live streaming on, on the Internet. And yeah. Well, that's what's going to happen. They're going to shut your show down and Alex's show down. And then the only place you're going to be able to go is the computer. Yeah, they'll shut, they're, people. they're trying really hard to shut down the Internet now. Um, I know. i to shut it down and shut you down, and it just ain't right. Well, any other comments? Well, no, just keep doing what you're doing, and I believe this 9-11 isn't like they say it is, and 
hopefully we'll get to the end of the matter and the truth of it all. Well, it might be driven home real soon because of the pending war that we have coming up with Iran. And that brings me to my next subject, but thanks for calling. It's going to get ugly, but hopefully it'll get better. Right on. Keep it up, Bill. Later. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Now, this one here is a book that's been out for quite a while. Let's see if I can find the copyright date on it. But I think it was uh, 2006. Uh, Oh, yeah, it was 2006. Scott Ritter, the U.N. arms inspector who called BS on the weapons of mass destruction and was right. Well, he had a book called, right here, Target Iraq. And this is Target Iran. And we have a buildup since 2004. Now, that book was 2006, that we were already two years into the buildup. And he mentioned that we had covert operations going on in Iran at that time. Guess what? We've got right here the book, uh, Jeremy Scahill's book on Blackwater. And uh, this is required reading, folks, required reading. Blackwater has now changed its name to XEZ, and uh, they've got two covert companies that are owned by Blackwater uh, running ops right now in uh, Iran. That was something that just came out in the news this week. Um, Anyway, I see we have a caller, another caller. Yeah, hey, Bill. Hello. How you doing, Bill? Pretty good. Great. Listen, I wanted to first comment on your show. I very much appreciate it. And every time I watch your show, it really ruffles my feathers because I'm I'm on your side of this whole thing. <laughs> uh, but, you know, what I wanted to make a comment on is uh, survey, airport surveillance. Oh. And my understanding, uh, and if I'm incorrect, please steer me in the right direction. Okay. I also but had an it, idea that I'll put on TV here. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, you know, my understanding of the 19 hijackers, there were only two that were ever photographed at the airport. Oh, is that right? I didn't know there were any. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, that's my understanding. And, and I knew that, so that seven or eight of them are still surviving. How do they do yeah, that? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's my understanding on that. And, you know, that's just one of the many questions, many questions, uh, as to uh, why were there never any photographs of any of the other hijackers at the airport? Yeah, Maybe because they didn't need to be on the planes if the planes were remote controlled. Exactly. Um, that's just supposition, folks. We, but you know, it's educated guess. Um, well, I appreciate it. I just wanted to comment on that and uh, you know see if you knew anything about right that. Now you were talking about the scanners at the airports, right? Correct. Okay. Well, they just announced that yesterday on the news that now it's big time. But on my August twenty first show, I think I mentioned that they just came out with that announcement too. So maybe they were just installing them on the twenty first show. Now they're in action. But I came up with a great idea, and if I had enough capital to just start a little bitty company, I would make a bunch of money on this. But I'm going to put it out there for somebody else to do. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, man, turn me on to a little bit of cash if you start making money from it. But how about, you know, the embroidery machines that embroider things on, on jackets? I'm not talking about stick-on decals, or, but actual embroidery. Right. And embroidery on hats. Well, I'm thinking embroidery on a shirt, but use metallic wire. And then have it say things like, this machine is bullshit. And <laughs> you go ahead and stand in that scanner machine, and the only thing that pops out is the words that are on your T-shirt underneath your regular clothing. Or 9-11 was an inside job, and that's on their scanner. How well, about that? A good visual. I actually like see you doing that. And then wouldn't that be a great thing? You know, or, or did you know that you're being irradiated at the same time you're looking at this picture? You know, or something like that. Wouldn't that be a great thing to do? I mean, man, I, I let the cat out of the bag, but that was my idea, and I wanted to be on record with that idea before anybody else ripped it off. <laughs> All right, well, listen, continue on with the show, and I uh, appreciate you taking the call. Okay, and, uh, well, we got another call. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Bill, I uh, just had a couple of questions about Building 7. Okay, I've got uh, the Bible for... here. Building oh, okay. <laughs> the Mysterious Collapse of the World Trade Center 7 by David Ray Griffin. Um, <laughs> all right, well, the first question is, what was Building 7 
specifically for? Well, I'm not sure what it was for, but it did in it did house first of all the uh, on floor 23 a very reinforced floor with its own oxygen, its own water supply, and its own fuel, uh, and that was the emergency center for the city of New York. Which the first time they needed it, they had evacuated before it even happened. Mm -hmm. uh, strange, but anyway, then the other parts of the building. That's what really you know, raises your eyebrows. We know that Enron was being prosecuted for security exchange fraud with California. And uh, there were a lot of prosecutions by the FBI. There were lots of prosecutions by uh, the National Security Agency. And all the evidence for all those agencies was stored in that building. Now, you could argue that there were some pe big people that were going to be getting into big trouble if those court cases went forward. And that's a real good reason to destroy that building. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can take your pick which one it might have been. Maybe all of them. Who knows? I don't know what sort of communications those bigwigs have with each other. But once you start looking at the boards of directors, you find out the same people sit on different boards. And, uh, well, that that's for some researcher to look into, I think. And by the way, if anybody out there is good at research, this show could use some. <laughs> My second question was regarding the steel in the World Trade Centers. Okay. I'm not sure uh, where I heard it. I believe it was on a small documentary regarding 9-11. But um, it was talking about how the jet fuel wasn't, uh, or when it was burning, was not hot enough to melt the steel inside the building. You yeah, know, well, much knowledge inside. that's a science that's fact that, you know, the jet fuel could get to, you know, under ideal conditions, 1800 degrees, and it took 28, so there's, we're missing a thousand degrees of heat, and it doesn't just accumulate. You can't just take an 1800 degree torch and hold it there for a while, and it gets up to 20, 21, 22. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. the, the hottest that anything can get is the hot, the heat of the flame itself that's trying to heat it. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just a science fact that building fires cannot hurt the steel. And even the people that, you know, over and over again, you hear people say, well, it got to 800 degrees, which is not true, not substantiated by even NIST. NIST has got to about four or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, the hottest steel. But mm -hmm. even even not, say, you know, foregoing that, let's let's give it to them that it got hot enough to the 50% strength point. They keep saying, yeah, when it gets to 800 degrees Celsius, which is pretty hot, mm -hmm. it reaches its half strength point. Let's give that to these guys as true. The building had like a, between a five and ten times over rating, so that means it was still only two and a half to five times stronger than it could than it needed to fall down. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stronger, strong enough that it couldn't have fallen down, um, even at fifty percent strength. So, I mean, because they overrate it so much. Did they ever interview the architect of um, the World Trade Center? You know, I think. Wasn't it National Geographic that did a special on that right after 2001 or something? I'm not sure, really. I, I heard that the guy that did the designing got killed in that accident. I I might be confusing him with somebody else, but uh, I do remember seeing an interview with the architect uh, on some sort of... Do you have the name of the architect by any chance? Ooh, no, I don't. But you know what? I'll, I'll bet it's in this book. Okay, now we'll take the next 10 minutes while I look through... <laughs> No, but let's see. Uh, I'll just take a look real close and see if it has a a part that talks about it. Well, I can't. I can always find. Yeah, it I online. can't. I can't glean it from the con table of contents right off the bat. That's but, all right. Yeah, it's um, something that m the mainstream media carried in an effort to. Uh, well, I don't know what their effort was. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Bill. Thank you for calling, and be sure to call back if you find out the information before I do. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Any more calls? Okay, we got another one. Fire Hi there. Hello. Hi there. I hope you just give me a couple moments. Uh, Go I'm ahead. A I'm a supporter of your cause. I I think there's some finer points, though, that could use a little polishing. Now. Great, because I'm a, I'm a gem in the rough, so they tell me. <laughs> no, you're fantastic. You know, it's, it's hard to to juggle the talent with the research sometimes. Yeah. So there's a new there's a book out that's fairly new. It's written by the senior counsel to the 9-11 uh, 
investigation. His name was John Farmer. He's a that, would be, that would be this book right here.